everyone and welcome back to Mining Network. So we're here in Cornwall, which is in southwest England, and we're here with Cornish Lithium to check out their hard rock Trevlor project. We're going to be looking at how they're getting the lithium out of the granite here. So let's go meet the team, check out the geology and see what they're up to. I'm here with Jeremy Raffle, the CEO of Cornish Lithium. Jeremy, good to see you. See you too, Peter. Uh, give us, just to begin with, where are we? What's set the scene? Um, we are standing in the Trelava open pit. You can see behind us, it, this is a former China clay pit that was mined for China clay until really quite recently. We've now taken this pit over for, and we're going to be developing this into a lithium mine, exploiting lithium from the naturally occurring micas in the same granite that the China clay occurs in. So we have our processing site just over the, the road over there, and that uh, which we're we'll going to visit later on, where we'll be taking the mica, um, the minerals, and extracting the lithium from it. Okay. So talk to us a little bit about the history here. China clay has been mined in Cornwall for 275 years, so a long, long history. The whole area around us, you can see, that looks like a hill over there. It's actually a waste dump. The whole area has been heavily mined for China clay over that period. Um, we heard about lithium in this location from a former British Geological Survey member who said, did we know about lithium in the war, being mined in the war here? Um, we started sampling uh, from this pit. We then drilled it for the first drilling campaign, a second drilling campaign. We've recently completed a scoping study, uh, which said it was a highly attractive uh, project with a very good rate of return. And we've now taken over the, 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 the lease on this project and we're, do, we're doing our fourth drilling campaign right now with Diamond and RC, uh, ready to go into our scoping, sorry, feasibility study that's now started uh, with the aim of being in production at this, uh, well, at the production site and this site by 2026. One of the things that most people that know Cornish Lithium, it's always geothermal, that's sort of what comes to your head, or the brines. Yeah. Obviously this is fairly, fairly new for you, the hard rock side, but you're going into production in a very, very quick time frame. How's, how's that so possible? It's not, it's not that new for us. It's just that most people do indeed focus on the brine. We've been doing this now. We've been looking at this project since 2017 steadily. Yep. Um, so it's possible because this is a, already an open pit site. So, you know, the, the environmental damage has already been done. This is a whole of all body mineralization style. So there's no strip ratio. We're going straight into the, into the granite. And, and then we can, we've got a very conveniently located processing site 500 metres away, just over the road here, uh, where we can actually, that's an existing processing site with buildings already in place with power, water, etc. And we'll be building our demonstration site there in the next few months and then going into the full scale build of the, big, the bigger plant, which is a £220 million uh, dollar pro project. Okay. So it, it really is a, a great opportunity because the... The, the pit's already here, the processing site's already there, and it's got a railway, it's got a port, it's got everything, so it's quite amazing. Brilliant, okay. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about the actually what's in the ground in terms of, because you're processing lithium from mica, yeah. which is a, a little bit new or different to what some investors look at when they're looking sure. at spodumene or hard rock deposits. Yeah. Maybe you could just tell us a little bit about what the processing might be and how it's sure. gonna be done. Yeah, I mean, uh, micas are being, uh, mine for lithium in China and process for lithium already. They've been doing that for some years now. Um, but most of the European deposits that are uh, companies that are aspiring to produce from, particularly Zinwald in, in, in Czech Republic, that's a mica deposit. Uh, the new Emily project, which is the Imrus project in France, that's a lithium mica project as well. Mm -hmm. And so this is nothing particularly unusual. It's just that most investors have only heard of spodumene. Spodumene is higher grade, but it requires high temperature roasting uh, to over 1,000 degrees centigrade to crack the, the mineral. Uh, we don't need to do that here. We're using a low temperature process called the Pidico process, which simply involves uh, flotation of the mica into a concentrate and then dissolution of that mica in acid to produce a selective precipitated uh, lithium hydroxide or carbonate. Okay, and just run through the timeline again here. So obviously at the moment you're, we've, we've just seen you're, you're doing some drilling at the moment. Yeah. Um, how much more drilling do you actually need to do When's the next study? When, when are you looking to actually start construction and build this process? Okay, so we're drilling at the moment. We've got a, a, an RC and diamond program, 
which is our final project pro program in fill drilling mm -hmm. to de better define the resource to, to, to actually go to a reserve for our feasibility study which is just kicked off now uh, to and aiming towards construction finance by 2024 and then building the, the plant and the, the whole open pit scenario between 24 and being in production by 2026. Okay. So it's really not that far away. We will be able to provide Britain with its first commercial production of lithium ever. So it's really exciting. Well, this is this is exciting because obviously we've we've also recently seen the government release a critical minerals assessment with, and lithium is obviously on that list. Yeah. Um, We've seen a lot of encouragement and support in the Cornwall area from different borough councils for different projects in these yeah. areas. Um, and what we also have, I guess, is an ecosystem within the UK for battery minerals. We have Valet with their nickel yeah. uh, process facility in Wales. We've got yourselves with lithium. I mean, do you see yourselves or see Britain as as a hub for battery manufacturing in the future? Absolutely. And, and the government aspires to be a centre of excellence of battery production. Uh, British Volts has had its challenges, but British Volt will end up producing batteries, I've no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, and also, we will be able to feed into that, hopefully, with our lithium. We're supplying between eight and 10,000 tonnes of lithium hydroxide or carbonate a year. Um, there's obviously other companies who are aspiring British lithium across the way here, also aspiring to do the same thing. Uh, plenty of space for both of us. Britain needs 80,000 tonnes of lithium carbonate a year, which is an awful lot, and, and only about five years ago that was about a quarter of total world production. So really a big target to go for, but I absolutely do think Britain has to produce batteries um, because if we want to keep our automotive industry, which provides around 800,000 jobs directly and indirectly, yeah. we will have to transition to electric vehicles, manufacturing batteries, um, the raw materials and the cars themselves. And it's about 4% of our GDP here, so it's not trivial. No. And the government is very aware that we really do have to um, get this industry going. So could you give us a bit of a geology overview, like how did the rocks we're literally stood on right now get here? 300 million years ago we had a uh, mountain belt form called the Varisca mm -hmm. Um basically just a normal mountain chain. Um, with that we had magma rise up through the, the root of the, the mountain chain, then over time that's been eroded, eroded down to ground level that we see today, and then this granite has been exposed. Um, which has allowed us to get into this system and basically come and mine it and look for the uh, lithium we're exploring for. That's awesome, thank you. And there's five granite types within Cornwall. We've got the G1, G2, G3, G4 and G5. And they're just the different types of granite. Mm -hmm. um, they're all evol evolved slightly differently. Um, and the one we're interest interested in is the G5. Uh, it's called the Topaz granite and it's the latest granite of that suite, so the latest forming and that is basically enriched in the lithium that we're interested in. Oh amazing, do you think we could go see some of the mica in question actually in core and cut throughs? Yeah we can go and do that in a minute, we can go and show you around the core shed and show you the rocks that are coming out of the ground currently. Awesome, let's do it. What we have here is the, the sort of typical really pale white colour and with these the sort of uh, pale brown lithium micas. The, the known as zimwaldite or lapidolite, they sort of straddle the, the, the compositional boundary between those two. And you just see they're sort of disseminated throughout this topaz granite. They sort of shimmer in the light as you, as you move across and they're sort of really distinctive and that's what's, what, uh, what holds the lithium in, in our ore lithology. Now that we've defined the ore, we, what our plans are to build a demonstration plant in, in this mm -hmm. shed. Uh, the, the reason why we're going through that step is we're using a novel processing technology called the Lepidico process. And in order to get from where we are now through the engineering steps, we need to take uh, this kind of smaller version of what will be the commercial scale plant mm -hmm. um, to prove up the, 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 the test work and the, the technology. Uh, so what we'll be building here is that ore that you saw, we first go through a concentration process yeah. which basically goes through grinding, crushing, uh, flotation and mag magnetic separation mm -hmm. and what that will produce is actually this, the lithium mica uh, concentrate. Mm -hmm. So that, that part of the process flow sheet will be built in this building that you see here uh, and then that will pr uh, produce the mica concentrate. 
Thereafter, the mica concentrate will then be, uh, go into the hydrometallurgical process, mm -hmm. which is the lipidical process. Uh, that involves uh, an acid leach and then a series of crystallization and precipitation steps that will drop out byproducts and then ultimately the lithium hydroxide, which is the, the sellable product. Mm -hmm. And this is, you know, the uh, lithium hydroxide. It's a white powder. This, this was produced from our, uh, from our pit mm -hmm. um, based on bench scale size, uh, kind of lab scale size uh, processing. So the idea is to go from that lab scale up into this demonstration scale, which is, as you can see, a much bigger way and, you know, it's a further step towards the commercialization of, of the process. Definitely. And what's the sort of time frame here? Because this is the first of its kind, isn't it, especially yeah. for England? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to start a construction of the demonstration plant by about Q2 next year. Mm -hmm. We've already started with the engineering's completed and we are starting to place orders. You know, by Q2, we're expecting the equipment to start being delivered, mm -hmm. such that by Q3 next year will be in operation at this at the site. It will look look totally different, but quite <laughs> exciting. <laughs> no, definitely. I, I hope to come and visit it when, when it's up and running. But talk me through the economics of the Cornish lithium in general. What's the project overview? Earlier this year, in, in about May this year, we put out a scoping study mm -hmm. which defined basically the economics of the overall project once we in full production. Uh, so we we based it on the uh, mineral resource which we announced in October last year which gave us an inferred resource of around 50 million tons um, that will th we put that through a, a, a scoping study and basically uh, based on a 1.25 million ton throughput will be generating around 8,000 tons of lithium hydroxide um, on that basis we will be uh, generating about 30 million pounds of free cash flow per year um, the more important factors uh, or economics of it is that it gives us a very healthy 25% IRR uh, and all of this is predicated on a lithium price of about $20,000 a ton. Given that right now lithium is uh, lithium hydroxide prices are around <laughs> seventy to eighty thousand dollars a ton. You know, there's there's quite a bit of upside. The other important thing to mention from those economics is that uh, the lipidical process that I mentioned do, uh, does drop out a whole lot of very useful byproducts, including mm -hmm. amorphous silica, cesium, rubidium, uh, gypsum. All these products can be sold, which will enhance the economics of, of the project. Oh, that's brilliant. I mean, if you can sell on byproducts, I mean, it's a win-win. Uh, absolutely. You know, it's part of, of our ethos and our ESG, right? Yeah. You, ma you make the most out of the material you have. And these byproducts dropping out are useful products. It means there's less waste and we're making the most of the material we're working with. So we, we're very excited about, about the byproducts also. Cornwall used to be the mining hub of the world. Yeah, and it did. I'd, uh, talking to people like yourself and people like Richard Williams, it seems like there is a real revival happening at the moment. I mean, what, I guess I guess what we're trying to think is, I mean, what, what sort of impact could this have on on the local community and and really Cornwall in, in general if if we do see this revival? It, it will be very material. This this site alone will provide three hundred jobs. It's a lot of jobs. I think South Crofty is aspiring to about the same 300 jobs but it's also the 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 value add the so mining has about a five times multiplier onto the local community yeah. so it's a big value add to the community it provides jobs in in cornwall cornwall is one of the most socially deprived uh, counties in the whole of the of europe so you know tourism isn't going to fix it um, that's part-time jobs and and obviously cornwall's already established tourism industry a new industry focused on battery materials is absolutely vital and will make a material difference to the economy here. And on our brine project, we'll also be mining lithium from that too, plus providing heat for uh, greenhouses, for creameries and all sorts of other projects. So it's a multifaceted redevelopment of the economy back to what uh, Cornwall once was, which is a powerhouse of, of mining. So Joe, how does, how does someone who works in the financial sector for Investec, focusing on natural resources, but how does someone such as yourself go from that to potentially reviving British mining in Cornwall? Good question. How, how did that start and what, what, was the, what was the trigger? Well, it started because I went to, I studied here, studied mining engineering in, in Cornwall, Camborne School of Mines, very proud of that. Good. Big clip for Campbell School of Mines. Uh, I'm very proud of, of having graduated there, and I've always been interested in, in mining in Cornwall. 
When I was at uh, investment banking, I started looking at electric vehicles. It was something really looming on the horizon. It hadn't really taken off at that time, but it was beginning to. And I realized that there was going to be an awful lot of demand for lithium and cobalt and everything else. And I remembered that a friend of mine had told me about lithium in Cornwall uh, five years before that. So I got home and Googled it and found that there was lots of records uh, of lithium in, as it turned out, in brine. And it actually was amazing because we found out that lithium in brine in Cornwall had been discovered in 1864 by Professor Miller, who was asked to sample some water from a mine over at our um, geothermal site, um, where he commented that the water issuing in great quantities at this mine is rich in lithium. So then they carried on looking at the lithium in water right up until the last mine shut in 1998, South Crofty, but there was no imperative at the time. Nobody cared about lithium. It was a small market. It, you know, the lithium battery, lithium-ion battery only got commercialised in 1981. It's not that long ago. So the real imperative has now come with electric vehicles. That's why my timing was good. We started to pick up mineral rights uh, in Cornwall and, and some very important mineral rights, uh, including the mineral owner of this site here. And really started to uh, investigate whether we could drill into the structures where the, the lithium in, in brine was first discovered. We found we could, we could suck it up to the surface, we could put it through what's called direct lithium extraction technology, mm -hmm. which at the time when I started the company, there were only two technologies that could, could, could do that. Now there's over 50, because the imperative of lithium has mean that very clever people like chemical engineers, etc., have worked out how to do it. So. We are using, we've got a pilot plant on our site at United Downs where we're actually extracting lithium from that water. And so all of that is proceeding really, really well. And then in 2017, along comes this guy who asked me if I knew there was a lithium mine in the war, which just happens to be over there behind that tip. And we started to look at this site and realized that we could have two horses in the race, the brine and the hard rock and run equal to each other. And we now really, both the people ask me which one's the most important, there is no answer. Both of them are two horses in the race. Both are going really, really well. And we're excited about both projects. So obviously, like we were talking about before, but this hard rock potentially production in 2026. Yeah. What, how are things progressing on the brine side? Because we haven't touched on that as much. Okay. Yeah. Um, where are we in terms of the process and facilities, sure. finding, wells large enough to, to process this and, and really get that into commercial production alongside this, really? We are, we've drilled three brine holes so far. Um, our latest one is down to 1,700 metres. We are extracting water from that. The, the grade is really encouraging. It's a very special brine. It's a pH neutral. It's, it's very benign. It's not like the, the brines in California, which are far more difficult to treat. Mm -hmm. We're really excited about that. And we've established many, many potential sites across Cornwall where we can drill into uh, geological features, suck the brine out, and provide heat to industry. Um, everyone's gas bill's gone up, so it's pretty handy that we can do that. And also extract the lithium in a very environmentally friendly way. That's the ultimate environmentally friendly way of extracting lithium is from brine. Nature's already done the hard work for you, taken it out of the rock, put it into solution. We can just get it out of solution using modern technology such as direct lithium extraction technology. We are really, really excited about that project because it's modular, we can do small uh, lithium extraction sites all over Cornwall, we think, because the geology is, is conducive to that. So far, so good, and really exciting. Good. Jeremy, thanks so much for your time, it's been amazing. You're very welcome, and we hope that you'll be able to come back in a few years' time and see this site in production. We're very excited about it. Thank Will you. Do. Thank you.